Hey guys, today I'm going to do a video talking about motor start and motor run capacitors and how to check them to see if they're still good or not. This is a blower out of a old gas furnace, but uh, it's the same for any capacitor starter, capacitor run induction motor. It could be a motor on an air compressor or anything, but uh, you'll primarily see this type of capacitor on the like blower motors and stuff, but the procedure for checking them is the same. On any capacitor, Unless it's wore off, you will see a rating on there. It'll tell you the rating. Like this one's six microfarads, 370 volts AC. And this one here is six microfarads, 370, the same as the other one. This is actually the old capacitor off this blur. I'll explain more about that here in a minute. This is another one here. You can see it's 10 microfarad, 370 volts AC. You also see on this one, it says plus six or minus six percent. That's the tolerance for the capacitance rating. Like it's 10 microfarad, you can go plus six percent or minus six percent of 10 microfarad. Okay, this shows the basic breakdown of how to figure up the, uh, the range of a capacitor. Like a 10 microfarad capacitor with a tolerance of plus or minus six percent will be 9.4 as the low and 10.6 as the high. So in other words, if you read your capacitor and it reads 9.1 microfarad, that means it's below the tolerance and will have to be replaced. If it reads more than 10.6 microfarad, that needs to be replaced because it's going above the tolerance. But this is the range for a 6% plus or minus on a 10 microfarad capacitor. Now this here shows the uh, like 10 microfarads times 6% equals 0 0.6. 0 0.6 is the uh, plus or minus range of it. It's the way you'd figure it. Percentage, so like 6% as a decimal is 0 0.06. So it'd be 10 times 0 0.06 and equals that. And then you just subtract and add it to get your range there so you know uh, the uh, tolerance range of your capacitor. And the values will change uh, per capacitor, like that other one I showed you was 6 microfarad, and it might ha have a tolerance of 8, but 6 is the standard, and uh, most manufacturers are 6%. And there's another way to do this, and I'm going to show you this the other method after I show you how to check the actual capacitor to get your reading, then we'll figure up, uh, I'll show you the other way to get your percentages. Now you can't use just any old voltmeter to uh, measure capacitance on capacitors. Most voltmeters will just show your ohms and your uh, volts. They won't show you a capacitive reading. Now if you look here, let me zoom in so you can see it better. This symbol right here is for capacitor. The straight line and the curved line. The one in the white, not the yellow. That's diode checking there. But the, the one in the white right here is the capacitor symbol. And it'll read in the, the correct range, either in nanofarads or microfarads, depending on the application. Now we're going to check this capacitor here. Now a little word of advice, anytime you do anything with a capacitor, always do it with the power off feeding the equipment, or better yet, have the capacitor off like this, but always take a screwdriver and short it out like this. You just never know that there could be a charge in there. And these will have a pretty good charge on there sometimes. I was working on a Jacob's Ladder setup, it's a high voltage experiment. And I had microwave oven capacitors hooked up and I had six of them. So it was like uh, 6,000 volts. And uh, I grabbed a hold of it and it discharged through me. And I just always short them out like that. Or if you got like a test lead or something, you could clip it on there and just keep it on there. Because actually static electricity, you can actually charge these up. So you always gotta be careful with that. Now, all you gotta do is set your voltmeter on the capacitance. And you just take your two leads here and put them on there like this. You see we're reading 9.08 microfarad. Another little tip I can give you, don't touch these. Uh, as you can see, it changes the uh, capacitance there when you touch it. So don't ever touch them because it will change your reading. Now it's reading 9.08. 
and this is a 10 microfarad capacitor with the uh, tolerance of 6%. So it's below, it's reading below the 9.4. So in other words, this capacitor is bad. If you get a bad capacitor, get your information off of it and throw the other one away. And a bad capacitor like that can still start and run your motor, but in the long run, you're damaging the motor because uh, when the capacitance changes like that, it's making the motor run hotter and it will shorten the life of the motor considerably. So if your capacitor reads low, always replace it. Or if it reads high, replace it. You want it within that tolerance. Now the capacitor here on my blower fan here, I had to replace it last summer. Which as you can see, it was almost getting ready to explode. And these will actually vent. That's what they call it. It'll actually vent and blow the gases out of it. You gotta be careful with your old capacitors, which this might be one of them. It has a PCBs, it's dielectric in there, and it's very dangerous. It can cause cancer and all kinds of bad stuff. So if you ever uh, have a capacitor that's leaking or uh, that blew up or anything, just don't get the stuff on you and clean it up and dispose of it properly. Uh, this capacitor here, I just kept it to show people what it looks like when the one's getting ready to blow. And last summer I was using this blower. So I got it set up to uh, as a switch right there, and I can use it as a fan in the garage here because it gets real hot in the summer. And I don't like air conditioning, I like to have a fan on myself. And I smelled the motor heating up. It's a very distinct smell if you ever smelled a hot motor. And I went over and shut it off, and I thought I'd check the capacitor. This capacitor was hot as fire, and that's when I noticed it was swelling like that. So I quit running it, and I ordered a new capacitor. And we're going to check both of these here just to see uh, just to see what they're reading. Now this capacitor here says six microfarad, so we're going to see what it's going to read. It's like 9.2 microfarad, and it's supposed to be six. So I don't even have to check that with the formula. You know that's way over the rating. So this is definitely a bad capacitor here. This here is going to be a good example of what you'll actually run into on a furnace or something. You always have your capacitor here. Uh, I recommend discharging it first before you even touch anything. That way you just know. You just you just never know. And if you got wires hooked up like this, just unhook it so that <clears throat> one side of the capacitor is unhooked. That's all you need to do to check it. Uh, some people like to take them out, but uh, you don't really have to. Now this is supposed to be a good used capacitor I bought online real cheap, so we're going to see what it's reading. So it's reading 6.8. That would be 113%, so that would be uh, about twice over, so that's actually a bad capacitor there, and it was supposed to be a good used one. But it's uh, a lot better than what I had on there, so I'm going to continue to use it for right now, but... Uh, Anytime you get a bad reading like that, always replace your capacitor. This is the other method of checking the capacitor within the tolerance. You take the reading from the multimeter, which was 9.08 on that one capacitor that was bad, and the nameplate rating, which was 10 microfarad, and you divide that, and you get 0 0.908. Then you move your decimal place twice, and you get 90.8, and that's percentage. Anytime you get a number like this, move your decimal twice and you get your percentage. It looks complicated, but it's actually very simple. So, uh, and it's a good method to uh, check your uh, tolerances. Well, guys, that's about it. Uh, this is a very important thing. It, uh, it's, always, it's often overlooked when you have a motor problem. Most people think it's your motor overheating, something wrong with the motor. And if you let that go for a long time, you will have an actual motor problem. But uh, a lot of times you can get by just replacing the capacitor if you have a, like a motor overheating, like I said earlier. Well, as soon as I replaced that capacitor on this, it uh, ran like a brand new motor. It didn't get warm at all. So that was what was wrong with it. So. Well, guys, if you got any questions or comments, uh, feel free to leave a comment below or send me a message, and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. So, thanks for watching.